a <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. I was on a roll, and next thing you know, my camera, you know, my uh, screen froze up. Then I tried to fix it because I tried to do like like a little um, green screen. I don't know, but I was on a roll. Next thing you know, everything falls apart, but it don't stop nothing. Not a thing. I calmed down a little bit, but. Before I get into the second article, let me just go ahead and just um, put it to you like this. I understand that when it comes to dealing with the matters of government, migration, and, and having issues, um, my heart goes out to you, it does. It, it truly does. But the way you come is a problem. Now I'm only speaking to people that are doing what they did down in Texas. That right there, you can't sit there and say that I want to bring my family here when it's you and a tall guy with a, um, what do you call it? A, <laughs> a light blue bank blanket. And you're like six, six, seven feet tall and you're over there beating up on National Guard people that are not allowed to put their hands on you and you know it and you're coming in doing two things you're coming in here one illegally two you're beating up on people so why would we want something like that here please help me understand you're saying that my country's horrible but look how you're acting do we want you coming from that horrible country and you bringing that behavior over here to us, to where we're trying to have some normalcy and peace, and you want to bring all that here? Uh, look, look, I'm sorry, but no, uh-uh, not at all. And you're talking about children and women. I saw nothing but dudes running through. They were knocking the people, man, Man, let me see if I can bring that up again. Cause you can't make this stuff up. You can't. That border, and and then come and and then comes to find out that that was not the first time that happened. People beating up the guards in El Paso was not the first time that happened, and I feel safe to say that's not the first time that happens in any border. The hundred. I mean, a 1,500 long border, you have people beating people up to get into the United States. Now, my thing is this. I didn't see a luggage. I didn't see any transcripts from the school that you came from. I didn't see no high school diplomas. I didn't see anything saying that you have a skill that would make the United States better. Nope. Mm -mm. And I don't care what you say. Oh, politics with law, you're terrible. You're over there being a racist. Please don't even call me a racist. Stop it. We're talking about land, the law of the land. They are breaking the laws of this land. And they show no respect for the laws of this land since the first second they came through illegally beating people up on camera. How can we be able to accept people coming to this country if they refuse to come right? And then all of a sudden when they get caught, they're crying, I don't wanna go back to my, you know, the, the wildest one was the guy that was being deported back to Nigeria when he, st oh my goodness, he stole his family's land, sold it, took the money, came to the United States illegally, and then was crying big alligator tears saying, I can't go back home. The government is going to hurt me. No, not the government, your family. You did some dirty stuff. You need to get, you need it. You left your family homeless because you stole the money so you could come over here and have the bling bling. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't feel sorry for you, see you, and I most definitely don't wanna be you. 
Mm -mm. But interestingly enough, since Greg Abbott was able to get, you can't make this up to get the permission to protect his border. Biden administration is saying, everybody come in. Uh, look, Governor Abbott, yes, I know that Texas is your jurisdiction. Yes, I know it is. But since I distribute the money to all 50 states, you're going to have to listen to what I'm saying. And that is you can't protect your border. Um, thank you. He says, you are right. Got no skills to offer. Yeah. And they're, yes, yes. When you come in and you act like that from jump, we have our own problems. We have our own criminality that we need to deal with. We don't need criminality coming here. Look, they haven't even put their foot on U.S. soil committing crime. <laughs> oh my God. You can't make this up. You can't. You can't make it up at all. But the wild part is Biden administration saying, oh, come on. Forget about it. Thank you. Forget about it. But then when people like me, this is the wild part. When people like me say, hey, um, we have laws in this country. I'm pretty sure you have laws where you come from. And that's probably one of the reasons why you ran because you did not want to adhere to the laws that your country said in order to be successful in this country, do A, B, and C. Sit your butt down, go to school, go to the university, help build this country to be better. Well, no, I don't want to. You are corrupt. You're making me learn. You want me to build a country. I want to go to the United States because it's already built. I want the bling bling. I want to be rich. I want to have access to all the women or I want to have access to all the men. I want to do that. In the United States, because I can't do it here. There's not that many people from all over the world here. So I want to go with the action. That's what that all is. And the guys who came through were dudes. There were no women. There were no children. And then those parts that do have women, I'm like, okay, where are your husbands? You got all these children, <laughs> man. It is a mess. It says, uh, we need to take, and take them to the board. Yep. And this house. Yep. That, that's exactly what we need to do and, and tell them to take some unoccupied homes and squat. You, you know, they, look down in Texas, you got people talking about the squatter laws. So when illegal immigrants come in, if they see a home that is not occupied, somebody could be at work. They could be at work. They could have gone for about two days, did, did a job, come back, and then you have a family in your home. And Biden's okay with it. Somebody put a mortgage down. They're paying a mortgage for some people who were who who has it, who's not in this country legally. Not only legally, but they came beating people up to get in here over there national guards and i hope they find that guy a real tall guy with the light blue uh <laughs> what, do, what do you call it um uh blanket on running running up uh uh el paso running through el paso with a light real tall yeah but this right here is democratic policy and then the first thing that joe biden said oh my goodness I see all this chaos at the border. Um, uh, Republicans fault you Republicans. It's your fault. Republicans, you know, Biden, you might want to take responsibility for your failures. Most definitely you trying to bring all these people in, making them democratic voters. We all know what's going on Biden. And then if you don't know, I'm going to tell you, and that is, um, 
Phyllis says, yep, so many politicians have two and three homes. Yep. And, and look, you bring in millions of people in the past three years and a half, three years, let me see, November, this is what, nine months, whatever, give or take. Um, they brought all these people in. The first thing what they get, listen to this. The first thing what they get is a driver's license. Have you seen how some of these people are driving all over the place? Or if not a motor scooter, a lot of, man, I got to start taking videos around here so you can see what I'm talking about. I live in a sanctuary city, so I know what I'm talking about. I see it all the time. Okay. I don't mean that say it like that, but you know what I mean? They get a driver's license and ID. They get a voter registration card. Representative Nadler said they can vote in uh, municipal elections, meaning, meaning local. They can vote for the mayor. They can vote for city council. They can vote for the school board. They can vote for all these things and they have no legal standing and plus they get money. They get money. What is it? I think here in DC that they, they, they get like $2,000 a month, but you can't, um, give, um, Oh, let me calm down for a second. Oh, I do know what you mean. Um, thank you. I'm glad somebody knows what I mean because, because it's rough. And then those people who are saying, well, you know, politics with law, you're being terrible. You know, you're being this, you're being that we ought to be free. Look, let's go ahead and put it down what it is. What you want is international. That's what that's all about. Until it goes wrong. It's like deport them. Come on now. Come on. Be honest. It has nothing. Uh, there has to be something we can do. Yes. Look for me, I have been a lifelong Democrat. Okay. And I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about, look, my ex-husband's from Nicaragua. Oh, okay. So when I'm talking about the international, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly, uh, look. I'm not the only one I've talked to people. Okay. I know the mindset until the scales came off my eyes and I really start to see things. I really start to see, uh, to see it clear or shall I say clearly. Okay. I voted on the couch. <laughs> there is it's corruption. Power. Yes. Yes. And when I say, uh, well, before my other video messed up, I, I think maybe the Democrats has something to do with it. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I have less than 2,300, um, fall, subscribers and you can like, and subscribe and join sub, sub, uh, subscribers for free. Help me out. I'm trying to get more help me out. But, um, but when, but when you have this going on and, and possibly, possibly it might be a soft overthrow. Whenever you hear the Democrats talking, they're not talking about, uh, they're only talking about democracy, democracy, the freedom of the, no, 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 no. And then they're talking about, um, bringing people here and you, and I'm going to deviate for a quick second. Um, yeah, I used to be a dem too. I used to be, a, I used to be a Democrat until my eyes opened up. I did. And then I'm like, um, we need to deal with this constitution. The constitution is the law of the land and we have a president and people gone rogue that are going against the law of this land. 
Me I'm with you. I'm with you. I am the original lioness then. I'm with you. I'm telling you. I haven't seen anything that Democrats are talking about that is American. Everything what they're doing is anti-American. And what I was getting ready to say was what they're doing is they're bringing all these people here that have no legal status to get more voters or to get more representatives because you have the house of representatives. You have to have a number of representatives to deal with the number of people. So if you have an influx of people, you're going to need more representatives to represent the people. And then when you have more of the people, then you can vote to get rid of some things and to allow some things to happen, which they are doing. So this election is very important. And they packed, a, what is it now, 22 million illegal aliens from all over the world that are here. And you have some saying, um, if you don't know who I am now, you're gonna know who I am. We have no, I'm like, well, who are you? A guy said, well, who are you? And he said some kind of name. He said, my name, you will know my name. All Americans will know my name. Um, that's some scary sugar honey iced tea. That is. Uh, let me see. Phyllis said they always scream democracy when they, yep, 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 yep. And I am says democracy for, um, democracy for what? I'm sorry, for who and what is the question? Well, I haven't posed a question yet because my other live stream went kapooey. But if I were to ask a question, it would simply be this. What happens to the law abiding citizens? What happens to the law abiding citizens who immigrated here legally, what happens to, to us? Are we not important? We are the ones that are paying taxes. We are the ones that are continuing, continuously moving this country. We are the ones at the border trying to protect it. And we're talking about people, not, not only people who are, who are, native born that go back generations. Cause my, cause I, my family goes back, what? Six, five, six generations. As I look through the, uh, national archives, but we're talking about people that have maybe two generations and they are like, wait a minute, we got to protect these borders. Um, yep. Order out of chaos. I was getting ready to get into the Hegelian dialect. Um, Phyllis says, yes, then once they are Confederate in power, oh yeah, they will drop those migrants who voted. Yes, yes, voted for them. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Biden, Biden just said, I don't know if you missed this, heard this or not. Biden was saying after, after he was pressed, he said, um, Okay. Yeah, we let them in, but it's not like that they're going to have pathway to citizenship. Did you hear that? They're not going to have a pathway to citizenship. So when you have these children, okay, they're not going to have a pathway to citizenship. He's, he's using the 14th Amendment to bring them here. But he's saying, but you're, you're going to have all the rights to the democracy. He's not talking about the Republic, the Republic. He's not talking about the constitution. No, he's talking about the rules, what they make. They're going to take my channel down. I'm going to say it again. He's not talking about the rules that Congress. No, he's talking about the rules that Congress makes the federal laws, what they make 
that the Congress makes. He's not talking about the Constitution. No. But even though he's using some of the Constitution in order to make some of the federal laws. So if he's saying that they can come here, they're never going to be legal. They can have babies. Those babies will not have any legal access because they won't be able to get it even though they were born here. Their parents are... You can't make that stuff up. Also, they can stay in power. That's why I'm calling it a soft coup. Uh, Phyllis says, one other time uh, they say it's not like they'll be here long. Mm. I am says they don't, they don't need ones. Yeah. And they get all the benefits of a citizen. Yes. Oh yes. And we are left out in the cold. Like I said in my other, uh, the, the other video that froze up, had problems with Texas. Illegals are telling people to come here because the United States has a law to where they have squatter laws. Somebody could be paying, paying for their mortgage. They go out of state, go on vacation, maybe, maybe a week, come back and a family is in their home because you abandon your home, abandon going on vacation, spending money in another place in a United States taking the tax dollars someplace else to keep the money moving. But when you come back, you got some people that have no legal standards in this state, in this country that can come and abode in the place that where you're paying a mortgage, right? But it's no longer your place. What kind of sugar, honey, iced tea is that? Biden. What kind of sugar, honey, t iced tea is that? But let me go ahead and get to this article because tax, um, um, Biden's like, hey, you know, um, Mexico, check this out. Help me. Help with the rugs. Put a D in front of it. The, the, uh, the rug cartels. Um, they're causing a lot of problems. Oh, really? <laughs> really? They're causing problems? Oh, my goodness. Who would have thought? Who would have thought, who would have thought in a million years that, that, that the rug cartels will cause a lot of problems? Mm. No one saw that one coming. Mm -mm. Here, let me make sure there's no problems. Okay, good. Oh my goodness, good. Okay, Mexico's president says he won't fight rug cartels on U.S. orders. Call it a Mexico policy first. Oh, Biden, you messed up bad. You messed up bad. Here, Mexico City, Associated Press. Mexico president said Friday he won't fight Mexican rug cartels on the U.S. orders. In, a, uh, in the clearest explanation yet, he refuses to confront the gangs. Over the years, the president Andres Manuel Lopez uh, Obrador has laid out various justifications for his hugs, not bullets policies of avoiding clashing with the cartels. In the past, he said, you cannot fight violence with violence and on other occasions, he has argued that, that uh, argued the government has to address the causes of rug cartel violence, ascribing them to poverty and lack of opportunities. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Okay, wait a minute. It is wild. Uh, let me see. I am says they don't need one. They are uh, getting all the benefits. Okay. I am says how about they can legally care? Yes. Yes. They can legally carry. <laughs> the 
ATF. ATF said it. They can. They can. And also Phyllis says, um, and the police are armed, uh, are ordered to stand down. Oh yes, that is so true. And we'll arrest the homeowners if they remove the squatters. Ain't that something? And you can't tell me. And again, I say that, that, that this right here is a soft overthrow. We are being overthrown softly by our own democratically elected president. But then you call Donald Trump a racist. Um, okay. Do you see what's going on right now? You're over there saying, hey, Trump is a racist, but you have this guy over here giving the country away and kicking you out of your own home. Man, that's some of the dumbest stuff. And the cartels bring them with orders to steal, eliminate, and whatever to pray their uh, to pay their debts to the cartels. You can't make this stuff up. You can't. Uh, let me see. But Friday, while discussing his refusal to go after the cartels, um he made it clear he be viewed it as a part of the uh, of what he calls Mexican first policy. We are not going to act on we're not going to act as policemen uh, for any foreign government Lopez Obrador said. I'm going to tell you why he's saying that. Um at his daily uh, news briefing, Mexico first. Okay, now let me go ahead and let you in on something. I'm not sure how many of this know this, but I'm going to tell you all, because I, I said this last year in a previous video, when Mexico and rushing waters has a treaty of friendship, okay? And not only a treaty of friendship, but Mexico is also a part of the BRICS nations. Yes. Mexico is moving aside. Like, okay, U.S., you have done a whole lot. What you're doing you, with NATO and the things that are going on, you have blood on your hands and we want no part of it. Mm -mm, no. Don't ask us to do that because that right there is evil. And now you have all these people coming and invited and you know, Trump was like, okay, look, could you please help us and have them stay here? Now, I don't know what Biden did. I don't know what Biden did to add on to this. No, we're not going to no, you, uh, Mexican policy first, Mexico first, Mexico first, but they're all coming through Mexico. I mean, there's a lot going on. I'm going to finish this article. This is too wild. Wait a minute. Um, eliminate is better choice of words. Okay. Um, let me see. Where is that at? Um, here. Okay. Obrador, um, Lopez Obrador basically argues that the rugs were a U.S. problem, not Mexican, not a Mexican one. He offered to help limit the flow of rugs into the United States, but only, he said, on humanitarian grounds. Interesting. Of course, we are going to cooperate in fighting rugs above all because it has become a very sensitive and a very sad humanitarian issue because a lot of young people are uh, dying in the United States because of the Finn word. The president said over 70,000 Americans died annually because of synthetic poids. You see it right there. Like the Finn word. I'm sorry, I have problem with the algorithm. They would 
which are mainly made made in Mexico. Oh my goodness! From um. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. From producer uh, chemicals smuggled in from. Oh my goodness, Chai Not Knees. You see that right there, Obrador. Um, uh, Lopez Obrador views like many of his policies harken back, back to the 1970s, a period when many officials believed that Mexican cartels selling rugs to gringos was a U.S. issue, not Mexican ones. Okay, remember um, you would see uh, videos uh like um oh man like um oh, what is it called um animal house back in the 70s a lot of those movies back in the 70s to where they go into mexico and do rugs they did it there they weren't doing it here but they would go there and do it go to tijuana places around uh, not not too far in but just in enough to be able to exchange money, go do what you want to do, you know, whatever you did down there. Well, that caused a huge problem there at the borders because it, it brought more of the cartels closer to the border to where they could say, okay, well, now, now we have this now. That is an interesting statement, very interesting. And very true. Uh, for decades, past administrations in Mexico have thought the war had uh, thought the war against rugs cartel was basically a U.S. problem. Since uh, security analysis, David uh, Saucedo, noting that Mexican domestic rug consumption, while growing, especially uh, um, Hamptons, I don't know, means mines, you know, you see this mines are still relatively low levels. On the other hand, the rugs cartels provide jobs in regions where Mexican government cannot provide economic development. They encourage social mobility and generate revenue through the rug sales to balance trade and investment deficits. Whoa. Lopez Obrador has argued because, uh, before against demonetizing the rug cartels and has encouraged leadership and the Catholic Church to try to negotiate peace pacts between the warring gangs. Oh my goodness. Explaining why there has ordered the armies not to attack the cartel uh, G-men, Lopez Obrador said in 2022. Wow. We also take care of the lives of the gang members they are human beings. They also, uh, he also has said, um, um, he also has sometimes appeared not to take violent issues seriously in June, 2023. He said of the rug gang that had abducted 14 police officers, I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you to your father and grandfather suggesting that they should get good spankings. What? This is wild. Ask them about the, um, ask them about those comments at the time resident of one town in Western Mexico, uh, states that the, um, Micho, uh, uh, Micho Kaken, Michoacan, I'm sorry, uh, who lives under rug cartel control for years reached 
with disgust and disbelief. He is making fun of us. Uh, one restaurant owner who asked to remain anonymous because he, like most everyone else in town, has long been forced to pay protection money to the local cartels. And it goes on. And it goes on. It's a long article. But, wait a minute. But that's what we got going on now. Let me see the cartels. Let me see. Wait a minute. Oh. Okay, I missed these. Uh. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, I am says uh, they don't need one. They need to call. Uh, they need the benefit. Okay, I already read that one. Wait a minute. How about they can legally? Ca okay, I already read that one. Uh, Phyllis says. Uh, and the police are ordered to stand down. I already read the squatters. I'm sorry. The cartels are, are taking them here with border. Okay. Eliminate the better. Okay. Already, oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like they created a huge cartel power overload by accepting their ways. Yep way of making dollars or making money wherever the cartels are allowed to. Yup. 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 You're absolutely right. And guess what? Now it's coming to us because they're passing through along with a whole bunch of other people. And then, then, and, and now they're going to have straight access to us by being able to come through the borders with no problems. Let me see if I can bring up that video. Um, it is really something. Uh, let me see if I can bring the video up and you're going to actually see what happened the other day. I was shocked. Okay. Let me go ahead and let this go. I'm sorry. Come on, come on. Any music that pops on, then I get all types of uh, strikes and everything. It, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> and I'm not trying to take anybody's work or anything like that, no. Come on, this is a long commercial. Okay. Look at that. You see that guy right there with the light blue? sends the message to people around the world that even if you act like this, you can probably get into the country. And I think, okay, I'm not even going to get into that right there, but did you see that that right there occurred at the border? They are, and all of them were dudes. And did, and did you see that tall guy with the cowboy hat and the light sky blue jet <laughs> long? Well, I call it a long cardigan. Uh, Dude, that doesn't look good. Okay, I just want you to know that. We're in trouble. This country is in, in big trouble. And the United States government is promoting it. All for Democrats to stay in power. Now, here's the interesting part. The House of Representatives, every single seat is up for grabs. Now they brought all of these illegal immigrants in to vote for Democrats. You can't make this up. 
You can't. You can't. And Donald Trump is like, okay, I'm going to be president. One of the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deport him. I'm going to deport him. Phyllis says, from what I heard, our government actually does business with some of the cartels. And they've shown videos and border cartels giving money to cartel members. Um, they've been doing that for years. They've been doing, um, the government uh, alphabet agencies have been doing that for years. That is what the Iran-Contra scandal was about. Go, go back to the 1980s and check it out. Go back to the 1980s and check that out. Matter of fact, if you really, really go back in my earlier videos, um, last year, I was talking about how back, and, and, and they're still doing it today. They have uh, um, trains that are left at the train depot, whatever it's called, and it's unlocked, right? All of a sudden, this happened in 1980, and it happened again, 1990, 2000, and it just recently happened um, to th this year. This year, in January, actually January 29th, 20, I'm sorry, last January, 2023. Now they had, um, at the LA uh, train depot. Yeah, they're flying illegal immigrants in here too. Yeah, they are. At, at, uh, at the train depot, they had, um, right, with bullets that were unmarked. They were on their way to Tennessee to where they would get their um, serial numbers and then they would, uh, then they were going to go to different, um, what do you call it, um, stores, stores, right? It just so happens in LA, all of a sudden, these people came out of nowhere and decided to go down to the depot and happened to get an unlocked train, opened it up and took out all of these and it happened to be AR. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know exactly what I mean. <laughs> One five. <you> know. <laughs> and then you have these masks with these AR. Okay, I got it right. Yeah. Schools, you have these kids, young kids going to, um, up in New York. He took out what? 10 people. He's talking about some replacement theory that he read and he's totally. And then you have down there in Florida, um, that guy goes into a, um, a dollar store at that. And he eliminates what three people count. But California, all over the place. I guarantee you, those were the, that were untraceable. Down there in uh, Uvalde, Texas, when the guy, the young boy goes and eliminates 29 people. Mm. And his parents, he bought it from a private person. Did they say anything about the serial number and where it came from? Mm -mm. That was left out. Check my earlier videos and I show you documentation. None of this is made up. Everything that I say is written. Everything. I'm trying so hard not to get mad. <laughs> Try so hard not to get mad. Thank you. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And 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 this right here is on Biden's watch. And how many immigrant children have been 
lost in their country. You know, that's another one I'm going to have to get into. Um, but I have to do it in a way to where the algorithm is not going to su suppress my channel. Look, my channel has been so suppressed. On Instagram, uh, my channel has been suppressed because I'm telling the truth. I mean, I see... I see my analytics to where I'm getting hundreds of people, like 300 people a day are subs uh, following me, but I've been at uh, 32,000 for a while. It's not moving up. It's not moving up at all. And I'm putting out there on Instagram, true, 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 you know, putting all this stuff out there. But they always say, the first thing that goes in war is the truth. So now if I were sitting here lying and, and saying that, um, that, uh, president Biden has a oogie boogie in his nose and, and, and all this other stuff then I'll have, they would allow me to have like 10, 20,000 fall subscribers. I'll be getting people like this, but then I'm saying, wait a minute, you're over there doing this Biden. You're doing this. This right here is anti-American all of a sudden. My channel has slowed down, massively slowed down. The algorithm is like, up oh, politics with Laura. No, we're not going to let her out. We're going to put her out there in, in, in the galaxy of, you're missing, you know? Okay, wait a minute. Um... Let me see. Phyllis says, okay, how many children? Okay. But um, as far as what you just said, I don't want to deviate too far. Um, look at what Biden is doing. Look at the policies that he's passing. Look at the education and look at what they want you to learn. Look at how children can make life altering decisions. Who benefits from that? I mean, really stop. Really stop and think about that. Um, now, maps. Uh, how can I say this? Um, minor attracted persons. Hmm? That right there is a new actuality. That is new. And I'm going to say something. Some people may get really pissed off with me, but believe me, stand in line. There are a lot of people that are, that stay pissed off with me. Oh, wait a minute. Um, Phyllis says, yes, I understand. And it's so hard not to speak the truth. And yet uh, I have to keep resubscribing. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know what trait, yep, yep, and it used to be illegal, yep. Now, when I said this, I caught a lot of problems when I said marriage was never law. It's a contract between two people. Two people, it's a contract, it's business. I am going to marry you. We're going to have one union. I'm going to bring this. I'm going to bring that. And in case of we break up, then this. Now, when it came to, and I'm going to say it, gay marriage. Yes. When they made gay marriage law, law, that's when other stuff start happening. They were like, okay, well, we can have a civil union because it was never law. Now from gay marriage, you have rights for um, transgender women. I'm not trying to go too deep in this. It has to be another video. And then you have now it has come whew, to where maps are like, okay, I am a mexual orientation and because gay marriage, I should be able to marry whomever I choose. Now they have to lower the age of consent, 
my question is this, how low do you want it? Cause I know some of you, okay. But just, just to keep it funky. How low are you willing to go? Because some people are not right up here. And as I said to someone and we got into an argument, I said, children aren't safe in this country. They're not. Heck, we're at a time in the world where children are not safe in this world. And there was a woman down in Brazil. Where was she? Uh, I, I was I was watching this show, this uh, this judge show, and this father took this mother to court because his daughter wasn't with her, and she said that she um, loaned her daughter for five hundred dollars, and they took her to Brazil, and the father wanted to the woman. Oh, let me see. Wait a minute. Phyllis says, yep, it used to be illegal. I am says what I wanted to know is who was in charge. Mm. Well, we think that Joe Biden's in charge. We think. Yeah, you got to be careful and true. No children are safe. We're not. You know. My brother, um, he passed like 15 years ago. And when he did, he had no children. He said it is irresponsible to have children now. And when he passed, I have no niece or nephew. So it stops with him. He saw a lot of things. I'm just like, what are you talking about? It's not safe to have children. That, that, yada, yada. He's like, shut up, Laura. And stop being stupid. Open up your eyes. Can't you see? I see now. Um, and Phyllis said, uh, yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah. And, um, what this administration has done in my opinion, and this is simply my opinion, I'm not trying to sway anyone else has destroyed the United States for a very long time. It's going to be a long time to clean this stuff up because you have a lot of people that come from other countries. Now, I say this to people and they get upset with me and I read a lot about other countries. So when I'm talking to you, I'm calm. I'm talking to you based on knowledge, especially based on individual countries, you know? And they're like, well, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know I'm right. You're over there lying to me. I'm not going to let you lie to me. A lot of these people come from countries who, like I said earlier, who refuse or do not want to build their country up. No. People come here to the United States. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just just keep it funky. Look, a lot of people come from uh, come from other countries who are employees. Yes. Employees. They're employees in their country. They they live in a certain um class, whether if it's low or kind of low middle. People who are rich do not leave their country. They come and visit and they go home. People in the middle class very seldomly leave because they have a good life. Unless if their wife acts simple, I want to go to America, you know, and then they come. But majority of the people who come are the ones who are struggling in their countries. And, and they have failed to make a life for themselves. It is what it is. Then they come to the United States to be an employee. Now they're like, well, I'm, I'm rich. I'm rich. Um, no, you're not rich. It's just that our poor looks different than yours. We have more things and you have a belief that you're rich, but you're not, you're just still poor. So when I say that they get upset, well, I send, fa- I, well, I send money to my family. Well, yeah. Well, why don't you send your family members to college? Wouldn't that make sense and help them build the infrastructure to make your country better? But sending them money, they have no concept of money because they don't work for it because you give it to them. They spend it all willy nilly. 
I understand because my ex-husband's from Nicaragua. I know what it's like. I told my ex-husband, no, your family, some two, two needs to go to college. Two. I'll send, I'll send money. Well, we, 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 we can send money for them to go to college. Three of his, three of his younger siblings, one is um, a civil engineer. The other one, I think she's what a, a nurse. She's something. And the other one goes around Central America, South America in a rock band. I'm, I'm like, check, check out Visceral Grinder from Mexico. That's my ex-brother-in-law doing all that crazy. It's, it's like Marilyn Manson, but only in Spanish. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Uh, let me see. Um, let me see. You got to be careful. Yeah. But... But the people that you saw run through hitting the guards and they couldn't protect themselves, where were their high school diplomas? Where were their college education? Where? And what jobs are they going to get, let alone do they speak the language of the United... Uh, do they speak English? I guarantee you, majority of them don't. Like, I had a conversation with this woman... Um, Oh man, I walked down the street. I talked to everybody and I asked her and you know, I said, do you speak English? She said, no. And I'm like, why not? I'm like, where are you from? She told me she was from Venezuela. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. So I said, well, why, why do you come to the country and not learn, know the language? She was like, well, I don't know. I'm like, well, wait a minute. That makes no sense. You're please hear, uh, understand me. I'm saying to her, please understand me. You come to the United States and you don't speak the language, but you say that you don't know why you came here. That makes no sense, zero sense at all. But then I'm mean. Uh Oh, I'm sorry. YouTube just cut me off. Oh, wow. While I was, t yep, I'm sorry. Yeah, they, 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 they get me a lot. They get me a lot, especially when I try to respond to a lot of you. Um, after I do the video and people make responses, I can't even check um, the heart. I'm sitting there checking. It won't allow me. Me, I could write a, a, a message. I press OK or send and it doesn't show up. But, but speaking about this right here, we're not supposed to, we are simply supposed to accept it. Yeah, like, uh, like last year I, I was driving up and this um, guy on a, a, a scoot, a, mo a motorcycle, he was on a motorcycle and he's on a blue, I hope you see this video guy. I hope, man, I hope you see this video because you almost hit my car and you don't even know how to ride a motorcycle on U.S. taxpayers' money. Now, what the heck are you doing besides taking our money, spending it, and doing dumb stuff? Now, you say that you want to come to the land of opportunity. Damn it, you got an opportunity. What the hell are you doing? Dumb stuff. Just... And then I'm looked at upon as an ultra-conservative what, 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 they, look, I get called MAGA. I get called um, a, 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 a conservative black racist. I mean, <laughs> and I'm not. I was um, all for being, a, what is it, libertarian, small, small government. This right here is too crazy. But I get called all these names because I'm looking at what's going on and I'm calling it out saying, hey, you don't do, do you want this in your country? Well, no, we don't want, we don't allow that in our country, but you want it for my country. Well, you're rich. No, we're not rich. You, look, look, you can go out to Maryland. I live in a DMV area. Yes, sanctuary states. You can go out to certain parts of Maryland and certain parts of Virginia, and there are some people that have outhouses, okay? And 
the United States is run by only what 20 major cities out of 50 states, 20 major cities run this whole United States. What you got San Francisco, you have New York city, you goodness, Chicago, Detroit to some degree, LA, Houston, Dallas, that's seven. I'm trying to think of more. Sacramento, Philadelphia. Oh, goodness, where else? I was going to say Altoona, Pennsylvania, um, Altoona, Pennsylvania, but no. Somebody else help me. I only got the uh, nine, but there are s- s- some more. Um, um, let me see. Uh, Miami, Orlando, that's 12. Um, Key West, not Key West. New Orleans. There's not much that runs this country. We just are broke, but we make it look good. (laughs) That's it. We're broke, but we make it look good. Uh, Let me see. Yeah. But Joe Biden is using, what is it called, the modern, what is it called, the modern money theory to where you print, 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 print indiscriminately so so that Chicago can spend $50 million for one month for illegal aliens. Uh, New York City can spend, how much did Mayor Adams um, spend in New York city. I think it was like what 20, 25, 30 million. I know in DC, the mayor is spending money for the illegal aliens. Um, and then they go to giant, uh, a giant to cash their checks. Yes. Taxpayers money, the city council in DC, the city council and the mayor, all of the city council members, you raggedy one, uh, uh, Trayon White in Ward 8, you're raggedy and I can't stand you. All of them except for Mary Che who said no to allow illegal aliens to vote because this is a democratic city. Mary Che said no, no. Not the, no, no, we can't do this. We're going against the constitution. Mayor Bowser, you raggedy person and you lie. You looked me in my eyes and you lied. You're a sellout and you are an enemy to the, um, to, 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 to the United States constitution. You're an enemy. And I hope you get voted out because I'm not voting for you. allowed illegal Im- immigrants to vote in local elections thanks to that no good um the uh, uh uh the previous chair nadler you're a scumbag and you're anti-american yep a spade is a spade yep that's what happened and you have all these local elections, all these um, cities are doing this. And then people who are voting Democrat, they're like, okay, yes, okay, they're, they're all, and, and they're saying it. We are for immigration. Yes, we're for immigration, yes, uh-huh. And they're telling you, well, we want this. Yeah, well, we're gonna give everybody everything and everybody's gonna get something, yay, because we have modern money theory, yay. Mm -hmm. Until they don't. I don't, I I see this whole thing collapsing. I see it. But what do you think? Before you trolls start coming in, Tell me exactly where did I lie? Please. Don't just say, oh, you're a liar. No, 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 no. 
Don't make a blanket statement calling me a liar. Don't do that. That right there is, is disingenuous and it shows that you're triggered and also that you have no argument. Exactly. Put down here the number, the time, where did I lie? Tell me where I lied and then tell me what it is, but just don't say that I lied. I don't know what I'm talking about. Blah, 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 blah. All the dumb stuff. Come on, be specific. And then if you really want to do something, why don't you come up doing a live stream and then we can have a nice conversation, but I know you're not going to do it because you're one of those troll armchair warriors for anything that's against the constitution. Yeah, armchair warrior, and you're against the Constitution. So you have people like me who are making videos calling out the things that I see that's going wrong in the country, and then you want to be a troll. And I got to ask, let me ask you, are, um, trolls, how much do Democrats pay you to come and troll our channels and... And, w and then when you do come up, you expose yourself. And some of you should never, ever do that. You keep that to yourself. Expose yourself and get someone's channel taken down. How much are you paid? I would like to know. That would be a good thing for you to talk about. I'm a paid Democratic troll, and I get paid $2.50 an hour to troll you. Um, someone says... Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Okay. Phyllis says, um, they don't seem to think, uh, that it's a problem just to keep print. Yep. And that's exactly what modern. Yeah. And I am, uh, says, let us see if Philly, I look, Philly is a democratic city. Um, and there's a lot of people in there. Um, now I'm from originally from Pennsylvania and it was a red state and it's, it's kind of strange because you, you have like a lot of small towns of the, the major cities is, um, Pittsburgh, Altoona, uh, and Philly, not the Poconos. But, but it's mostly a, uh, uh, Pennsylvania is mostly conservative. And I got to say, um, matter of, I, I, I got to say, um, are, are they really allowing the people to vote or are they putting people that have passed away and putting them that they have voted Democrat? I, I mean, I just, I just see that. Um, someone says, um, Yes, they are destroying the great name. Yeah. And, and, and li listen to people, listen to the politicians. You really have to really listen. Well, you don't, well, in order to know what's going on and hear them dog whistling, you, you can hear it. Now they'll say, oh, this is, this is a great democracy. When has the United States been a democracy? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic. It didn't say to the democracy in which, which it stands one nation under, wait a minute. I, mean, I used to know I had to say it in school. Damn, I'm telling my age. You hear them dog whistling. You hear, you hear it. Now it's on both sides of the aisle. Keep in mind, the United States has a bird as its national symbol, and it has two wings, right? They have a right and a left, but keep in mind, it moves the same bird. And this is why I am an independent. I will abuse a Democrat, like I will abuse a Republican if I see you messing up, if you're not going according to that constitution that our forefathers wrote. And look, I don't need nobody black saying, well, we were slaves. Shut up. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Wow. 
Okay. <laughs> I got to finish my coffee. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I hope, I hope your time was well spent. Cause one thing you'll never get back is your time. You'll get back money. You'll get back your taxes. <laughs> you'll get back your ex. <laughs> And this right here will pass. This chaos, it will pass. It will level out. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff coming. I, I will, I'm going to tell you. How about the people of color? Um, by me being a person of color. No, not a person of color. No, I'm, I'm black. Okay, I'm black. And yes, that is a legal term. White is a legal term. Black is a legal term. Person of color is something that just came into the existence back in what, 1990s in Florida? Same with minority, no, no minority came in 1990. Um, man, they got a whole lot of mess, but um, this will pass. And when it does, we're going to look back at it like, man, that was cr crazy. That was wild. All because they wanted to stay in power. And, 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 and whenever you say Democrats or democracy, that right there is socialism and communism. Look it up. Look it up. Look up liberals. Just, just, just look it up. Don't believe a darn thing that I'm saying. Keep in mind. We are a representative republic. One vote, one person. We have a representative that goes to Congress. We have a representative or a delegate that votes for the president. We vote for popular vote. Why are you saying, you know, West side, East side? You need to pay attention to the delegate. You say, look, I'm gonna vote for you and I'm telling you, you better vote Republican. You better vote for this person. Donald Trump spilled the beans. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You can hate Trump all you want. But he exposed a lot of things. He did. You don't have to like him. Heck, I don't like a lot of people. In my building, I don't trust <laughs> Okay, but it doesn't mean that you have to be so wound up within your ideology. And yes, political correctness killed America. Please check out my channel, get my merch, please <laughs> buy my merch. Um, but how does this affect people of color? Um, you have to first understand who are the people of color that, 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 that you're talking about. The people of color who you think is the people of color are not actually people of color. Whenever you fill up, fill, fill out an application, man, I'm telling you, you're going to get my channel taken down. <laughs> Check out your job application. Check out, you know, wh wh whatever you fill out. It says white and black. Now they have Ashkenazi. That right there threw me. I'm like, what? White, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic. That is it. You don't see no white, black, Japanese, white, black, or uh, white, black, African-American, white, black. That's all you see. So when you talk about persons of color, what do you mean? Do you mean it in a construct way or do you mean it in a legal way? Because they just changed what, who's white and who's black now. Thank you. When they look the, just the Chinese, the Asian people, you all screwed yourself. You did. 
you screwed yourself bad because you could not get into the affirmative action saying, oh, well, you know, these black Americans, they're lazy and they, they, they're over there getting a free ride, getting into these Ivy League schools. No, affirmative action simply gave you a hand in. It doesn't mean it gives you a free ride. You got to bust your butt to get that degree. But no, that's not what you did. You overturned it, dummy. You overturned it thinking that you were going to put one over on black Americans. You know what you got? You no longer have your white status. The Supreme Court struck down affirmative action because it was, mm, I did a video on it. Check out my video. And Clarence Thomas and um, who was it? Uh, Justice Gorsuch removed race when they removed race and and the Asian students really had no understanding the levels of affirmative action because it went into where to live. Uh, at some places, they had redlining to where black Americans couldn't live in certain places. They were set, sectioned to certain area codes. Um, uh, immigrants, immigrants, don't you find it a little funny how when you live in, in the building that, that you live in, the community, the community that you live in is all minority? You haven't figured that one out yet. You've been redlined and don't know it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So when affirmative action was flipped over or, 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 or abolished, um, they redefined what whiteness is. At one time, Asians, all Asian from, uh, for, you know, uh, from, from Japan, all the way over to the Middle East was considered white. All of Africa, you, you could be blacker than an ace of spade and you could identify as white. All of the Caribbean, white. Mexico on down, white. The only one who were black were black Americans. Now that that right there was taken over, now, quite interesting, India on over are minorities over through China. Now China, all the way over, all, all the Asian countries are considered minorities. All of Africa, except for rich Nigerians, are minority. Rich Nigerians are considered white. Look, I know I lost some people. It's true. Look at the applications that you fill out. I'm not making this up. This is what it is. This is law. I'm not saying anything that is not true. Check out your, uh, <laughs> hey. I got some people jumping. Oh no, she's getting too deep into it. So when you say people of color, what do you mean? Social or legal? Um, let me see. Phyllis says Trump opened our eyes. Yeah, he did. Look, look. When Trump first ran, I thought it was funny. He's like, Rubio, little hands, Rubio. I mean, I thought, <laughs> I thought that was funny. I didn't take him serious. I didn't take him serious. I thought it was funny. I'm like, this guy's hilarious. He said, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz, yeah, you know, your peoples have something to do with JFK. Yeah, I mean, he was out there. I'm like, oh my, I mean, to me, I didn't have to watch soap operas. General Hospital was done. I'm like, this is something. Then he's like, wait a minute. I had that delicate. Wait a minute. What's up with that? My delegate, what happened? They're no longer with me. And then by him exposing that stuff, they're like, well, you know, you have delegates, super delegates, you have a delegate that can no longer, uh, um, that that is a dedicated, who knew we had delegated, uh, dedicated delegates? 
that is only for that person right there. Who knew that? Trump exposed a lot. A lot that we didn't learn in school. Did you learn that in civics class? I know I didn't. Did you learn that in college when you took government? Because you have to take some kind, you know, you have to take a little something. Did you learn that? I know I didn't. I'm about to see if I still have my college <laughs> government book. I don't remember that. He exposed a whole lot. So you're absolutely right. He did. He did. But I was getting ready to sign off. You all got me going. Oh, man. Hey, so I'm going to go ahead and close it up. I do thank you for stopping by again. I said that uh, time, you know, you never get time back. Please like, subscribe. That's for free. Liking and subscribe is for free. But I do thank you for participating. I thank you a lot because I went on for an hour and 20 minutes. I went on a rant. I did. I did. I did. I do want to thank you again. And thank you.